uh, when I got invited and uh, people asked me to share, uh, okay, can you come and share about game, women in game industry? And I was so, you know, I was so surprised. I'm like, is that even a topic? <laughs> But, um, and I think the reason for, for my surprise, because, you know, I've been in the game industry for, for five years, but actually together with my husband, it's, uh, it's 10 years. And we go to a lot of conferences, you know, game conferences together. And, and it's mostly male, you know. I have uh, never seen a lot of males uh, in, in the game industry. But for the past few years, I think, you know, the percentage has changed a lot. Now we see more and more women um, in the game industry. But even so, you know, uh, when, I, when I tell people that um, uh, I'm a game developer, people still have this, you know, disbelief and shock, you know, uh, looking toward of me. They ask me, are you sure? Are you not an accountant or, or, or in advertising? And say, no, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm actually a founder of a game studio. And then they all look at me and they're like, oh, you, you don't look like a game developer. So I all ask them, like, so what do you think a game developer look like? <laughs> so do you think that I, I don't look uh, smart enough or, or, or not male enough to be a game developer? So, so today I, I, I decided to share, you know, my, my real life story of how I I, I, I get to become a game developer, and the benefits and the challenges I face as a, a, a female leading a game studio. Um, so I was growing up in a third world uh, country, uh, I'm from Vietnam, uh, in a middle class you know, family, and we didn't have You know, uh, we, we, we didn't have Xbox, PlayStation, you know, uh, anything in our house. We, we didn't even have a TV when I was growing up. I, I, I'm, I'm very old. I'm born in the early 80s. So, um, uh, but lucky that I have my little brother who's an absolutely gamer, right? He, he goes to this, um, we, you know, it's like game center where they have TVs and a Nintendo. And we, uh, we rent it per, per, per 15 minutes, so we have like one cent, 15 minutes, we can play a game. And my brother was the one who introduced me to only two games. That is uh, Mario and, and Lord Runner. And that's the only two games I play for my whole life until I found a fun car. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I have a, a super, super tiger mother who believe that, you know, gaming distracts your study, you know, gaming is bad, and you, you, should, you should study, you should focus on your education. So, um, so we never, you know, we, we, we have to sneak around. So my brother and I, we sneak around, and we, we save all our money, and, and I'm, I'm absolutely, you know, I'm addicted to, to, to these two games. So uh, later in life, I, I was sent uh, to study abroad. So I went to New Zealand, England, Uh, to study, and I have to spend all my time learning a new language. I have to learn English again, um, and then I, I, I have to, uh, you know, adapt to new culture. I have to uh, focus to getting my good qualification. So I, I put, you know, gaming on side. And then when I finish my, my, my university, it's in 2006, I met this guy, and he's a game developer. So uh, I asked him, so what game are you making? And guess what? He said, I'm remaking Lord Runner. And I tell you, it's like the best big cup lie in history. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, oh God, I got to marry this guy. Because his, <laughs> because his only competitor would be the guy who made Mario. And, and seriously, if you meet anybody, you know, uh, any guy out there that making uh, Mario, tell, tell him, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't wait. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I marry uh, my husband, who's a game developer, and, uh, and we, uh, we have fun, we play games, we travel the world together, and, and finally we started FunCoy together in 2012. Uh, so my, my mother always told me, uh, V, you are an Asian woman, always remember that. You're an Asian woman, you have to walk two steps behind your man. And I'm like, why? I can walk side by side. And we're actually now a little bit ahead of him because I'm CEO. <laughs> so I started FunCoin, and it's, it was a game studio. It was a you know it was um, it was a startup, but it's not a normal you know 
uh, a startup and it's not a normal setting up because I always imagine you know having startup meaning you have all the skill set you have all the knowledge and then you get people you recruit people and and, and you train people right but for me I I, 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 I I don't know how to code and and I don't know how to, to paint or draw so I, I actually get all the talents and I say how about now you work together and then you teach me and guess what? It worked. <laughs> they, uh, I think, uh, part of them they uh, they feel sorry for me, or or part of them, uh, you know, I, I I'm honest, you know, I'm like, okay, I, I don't know, you know, I literally tell my company they said I said that all of you are smarter than me, so I, I think I'm the least one in my company, but I think uh, you know this is what people get wrong. So when I tell them I'm a tech dummy, they think I'm dumb, but that's not true. <laughs> I just don't know tech. But I, I know my limitation, so I know how to manage you know, the people that know tech. So I, I have the skills to put people, all the talents together, and work well together. But you know, a, lot of come that, you know, a lot of time comes with, 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 with shedding blood and tears, you know, when, I, when, they, um, you know, when they, they, they don't think that I know enough to tell them. But, uh, and then I have to try a lot harder to, to be reasonable, to be logical, and, and to gain respect from people. But uh, I think uh, at the, you know, at the, after four years of this time, I think I, I, I'm, I succeed in, in setting up the team, manage the team of 30 people. They work hard and efficient together and still you know, respect me. <laughs> uh, another challenge, and I think this is not the challenge uh, uh, because it's the, as a woman in the game industry, but I think it's a challenge for any woman and, and, and especially, you know, uh, women in, in business or, or, or entrepreneur is the work and life balance because I have twin girls. So, you know, it's, it's very difficult to find time to, to, to be in the company, to manage people, to go to conferences like this and at the same time, you know, uh, manage the company and raise the company and raise my kids. And I think, uh, you know, the function of being a woman and the function of being a mother um, hasn't changed. And I don't think it's going to change ever. So I think you know to to have time, to have in a, to find enough time and to be efficient, uh, manage the company, and, and as well as 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 having my my children was is really uh, one of the hardest uh, things that I ever have faced. But um, so what's the difference between normal business and and, and, and game, a woman in game? It's, you know, normal uh, entrepreneur, you, you know, you do other things and when you come home, you, you stay with your children and then, you know, you, you, you have fun together. But for me, I make games and I play games all day. And when I came home and I was just sitting down on the sofa, my, my kids come to me and say, Mommy, play with me, let's play some games. Here's an iPad. And like, oh man, <laughs> games again? <laughs> so we, we, we have, you know, it's like, Work and, and life is, is all, you know, it's all crossing to each other. And another challenge is, you know, we really have to play games to make games, right? We need, we need to play games to get inspiration. We need to play games to, um, you know, to learn ideas, things like that. And for female, and especially, you know, my age, I don't have any female, other female friends who share the same hobby, who share the same interest in playing games. I don't have a crown like a guy, you know, my husband, he has like 10 people. Every time he, he has free, oh, oh wife, I, I need to go and play games with my friends. And it's like 10, 15 guys, you know, gather together to play games. I think if I tell my, my female friends, hey, let's gather, play some games, and I, I think they would just look at me like alien, you know, like, where are you from? <laughs> so uh, I, think, I think that's a challenge too. But I think this, this thing uh, will, will, will change because I think the n new people will will um, grow up with, with more exposure to games, and then we have more female interest in games and have a game community that, that are for, for female. So that I, think that's, I think that's enough of the, of the challenges. I, I don't want to, to, to let you, you know, make you feel down and don't want to get into the game industry. So now I'm just going to talk about the benefit of, of, of being in the game industry. I think the best thing is that you know, I get um, this uh, respect and, and praise, you know, from people all the time when I tell them I'm, I'm, I'm leading a game company. So uh, they say, wow, you, 
you know, you make game, that is so cool, right? So actually, this, um, you know, there was this guy who came to me after knowing me and, 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 and knowing I'm, I'm, I'm leading the game industry. He came to me and he said, Ovi, I'm, I'm sorry that I judged you. And I said, what? Why? 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 He said, I, I could not believe that you, you know, you, you, you're making games. And I thought that you just, you know, someone who marry rich and have an easy life. And I say, excuse me, I marry a game developer. <laughs> what do you mean I marry rich and have an easy life? So, yeah, I think another benefit of being a female in the game industry, especially now when the industry is changing so much, you know, and it feels like, you know, game is for guys and, and game industry is for men, but it's not true. Now we see more and more gamers that are, are female. And, uh, you know, with the rise of mobile games, I think, it's, it's just make it so accessible, right? So game is now for all genders and, and, and for all ages. So I think being female, we have that perspective, right? We know what other female want. We know what we want. So I think, uh, you know, um, some games in, in, in FNCOI, some games in my company, I actually, I actually design it. I actually part of the design team. And I make the game for female. So Kiwi Wonderland is one of the games that we make for, for female because it's just kills, you know, it's touching. And, and, uh, and after I make, uh, I actually designed the introduction to the game, and I have a lot of people emailing me after. I have a lot of, of feedback, even on App Store, saying, they, oh, I almost cry, you know, I, I love this game. I, I, it's just so touching. And I think it's nice, because now, you know, uh, women can make games for other women. So we don't rely on men making us fun and happy. We, we, we can do that to each other. Uh, so I think that's the, uh, this, the advantage. And about building team, uh, I, you know, I, I think I have an easy time with recruitment for some reason. So a lot of talents, actually there was a few, few guys, at least two in my company. He, they have multiple offers from the company. And they said, oh, I finally choose Funkoi. And then my, they didn't tell me. Uh, but they, they tell others uh, of my employees, say, oh, I, I, I want to work here because, you know, the boss is so pretty. <laughs> So I guess that's, you know, that's, that's the advantage too. So, uh, so my conclusion is, um, you know, if you, if you strong, and you, if you think you're strong, and you think you're smart, and you think you can totally, you know, good enough, cool enough to be in the game industry, I said, you know, you, you go for it, be in the game industry. But if you're weak, you know, and you're weak soul, and you say, oh, I need people to love me, you know, I said, go to game industry. You know, who hates the game developer, <laughs> right? So, um, uh, so I, I, you know, after this session, I said, uh, I, I was thinking, you know, okay, I'm just going to go up and talk about my life. And after this, it, people think, oh, V, you know, are you great, you know, I think you're smart, you know, I, 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 I would love to be like you. Then I say, okay, great, you know, you know be, be like one, be, go to game industry. But if you think, oh my gosh, she's crap, you know, if she can do it, I can totally do it. I say, okay, whatever works for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, uh, so conclusion, just go to the game industry, more female game industry, we need more female game industry. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, V. That was quite funny and inspirational. I, it reminded me uh, of myself making choices between among four job offers, and I almost went with one with a very pretty boss myself, <laughs> uh, which I didn't end up doing, but I almost did. And also, thank you for calling us who were born in the 70s, 70s or uh, earlier super, super old by calling yourself very old. <laughs> um, so do we, have, <laughs> do we have any questions from the audience? Yes. Um, I want to ask, as a mother, if you set rules for your kids on how much gaming exposure they get every day like oh you can only play two hours per day mm. or do you just let them play as long as they want since you know being in the gaming industry it also helps them being exposed to it early on yes i you know what this uh, the, the, the question that i'm actually scared the most that would come up and it came up it's crazy <laughs> 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 no, it's okay, because, you know, uh, as cool as I pretend to be, and, 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 and as a, you know, a game developer and this, I'm actually hardcore, I'm a super tiger mother. <laughs> so for the first three years of my kid's life, my kids are four years old right now, so three years of my kid's life, no iPad, no iPhone, no TV in the house, 
You have to read both. So I committing reading, reading. I think up to now, when my my kids are four years old, I think I read more than 500 books to them. So I and my husband we take turn to read to my kids. And so for the first three years, no iPhone and no iPad, right? So no games. But now, because I don't want them to be alien, so I start say, okay, now you can go watch some YouTube and and and, and play some games. But uh, yes, I limit. Um, I, I, it's very difficult, you know. So I trick them this way. I always leave the iPad only five percent charge. <laughs> That's a good trip. <laughs> so you can play games, you can listen to music, you can watch YouTube, you can leave it alone. I don't know. You have five percent, so you 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 calculate, you know, how long they have. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I sometimes just unplug the Wi-Fi router. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's probably a better trick. Do we do we have other questions from the audience, guys? Questions? Yes, please. Um, you mentioned that in a lot of places you get looks of disbelief or people who don't believe you're a game developer. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed it worse or better in any places than others? Are certain areas more negative towards this than others? What do you mean by negative choices? Um, do, do some places give you more disbelief? Like, are there more people who are less accepting or less understanding? I think, uh, I, I don't want to, but I think it's definitely Asia. Because I think, um, I, I just actually just found out to, uh, yesterday that the CEO of Concrete, which is, you know, a big, huge company, the CEO is actually a female. And it makes me very happy. And I think, uh, I think uh, you know, this trend in the West have been changing a lot faster than Asia. So sometimes when they look at me and they say, you don't look like a game developer, I'm still wondering, do I look, I don't look male or I, I, I don't look Western. So uh, uh, I think definitely Asia that we, uh, you know, we get less in uh, women in game industry. But I think now with all these, you know, super strong Chinese women, uh, I think Julie, Julian and, and uh, and one E, uh, I think I met them at the speaker dinner. They promised to come today, but they didn't. Anyway, they <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway they they are super cool uh, women in game industry. Uh, I think more and more now Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Singaporean. I mean, a lot of, of countries coming up that we have more women that they, you know, they love playing games like you know like cool gamers. And, and, and younger too, that, 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 that involved and, and, and wanted to be in the game industry and actually step into the game industry. Hey, ha have you ever feel that you were underestimated because you were a woman? I think I just got a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, disbelief, shocking face. But I, I, never, I never take it as anything negative, right? I think people just, you know, people want to um, support more just because you are, you are a woman in the game industry. And, and, and I think it's a positive, right? People just want to help more. And so, you know, in, in Da Nang, that's where I'm from, there, there's a game community too. There's a game, not community, but a game developer community. So we have like five, six uh, companies the same size with Funkai. And we are, uh, you know, all the CEOs, we gather and we, uh, you know, we talk and things like that. And that's one of the advantages that because we're so close to each other, we, we actually you know, keep our own talents. We don't go steal each other's talents, you know, to the company. And I was just actually I was just telling Michael yesterday that you know it's, it's so wonderful because I get to keep my talents. With, I don't have a lot of competitors. And he said it only works because the leader is a woman. <laughs> so I, I I think uh, you know I think I, I, there's no negative. Uh, being a woman in the game industry, I think I get a lot of positive and and I get a lot of help because you know people don't want to make me cry. <laughs> Thank you so much for for your presentation. You. I'm uh, Joan. I'm CEO and co-founder of Dragon Game Studio. I'm based in Bali, Indonesia. So oh. I think I will uh, exchange my business card with you, and we yeah, can be wonderful. friends. Yeah. <laughs> I also have a daughter. She's uh, almost three years old. And she's with us here also at the convention. She's uh, with the nanny. But I do the same as you. I, think I saw her. Yeah, you saw her, yeah. <laughs> we, I also do um, everything together with my husband, travel the world together, uh, build a company from scratch. Uh, we're almost four years uh, now. 
So let's exchange our uh, contact details and then we can maybe start Great. a Thank women you. game community. Yes, we will. All the gonna, best. Yes, so the next casual connect, Michael, remind me that we got to set up a female game community. And I'm sure we have Sounds enough people. I have a quick question for you, you yes. and your husband, who make better games. I make better games for other females. And you might disagree because you are male. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Another big round of applause for uh, okay, thank you. Thanks for